the owner of Cape Fear Games, Heath, has given me full access to the estate sale in the back rooms of the Cape Fear Games game store. So I'm going to get to look through and share with you some of the finds. Now, I am brand new to this, looking for older games with, with such histories. The ones that are already opened, I'm going to be able to take a look inside and share that with you. Howdy and welcome back. I'm Mike, your board gaming every dude, and this is the estate sale at Cape Fear Games. And this is a great time to mention the sponsor for this video is Cape Fear Games. They're located in Wilmington, North Carolina. Now, a lot of the games that we're looking at today, you're actually going to see them on eBay under the Cape Fear Games store. You'll be able to look through the whole estate sale there. They also have some on their website, but I believe the eBay is the most up to date. If you're interested in the retail games and the retail side of the store that we usually check out, also I'm gonna put my code Board Games for one and if you go to the link in the description below and in the pinned comment, you can go there, search for the board games you want, and use that code to check out for 20% off. It's a great way to support this channel, which I greatly appreciate. But also, if you want to support for free, just click the like button. And if you want to see more videos with me, please just click subscribe. I love hanging out with you. I'm all ready with my collector's gloves. Since this is my first time, you're going to see that there are plenty of games here that don't have a one-player mode. Some of them are going to, but since this is an introduction, we're just going to take a look, and maybe in the future, we can come down and narrow into more niches. Check this out. All the way from 1996, you can tell from that artwork there, we've got Manhattan here. It's a skyscraper building game. 1996, we're going to go and open this one up. All right, and we've got Manhattan, the skyscraper one we wanted to look at. This actually looks like it might have some plastic building pieces. Got our original rule book there, Mayfair Games. Oh my goodness, back when we did postcards and we had a thing called stamps. Is there still such a thing? Who knows? All right, let's check out these cards. It looks like they tell you some kind of grid placement. All right. Stairs, buildings. Cool. Is there anything on the... Oh, no, that's it. So that is the colorful side. Yeah, we are going old school. Look at that. Hello, 90s. And oh, my goodness, those plastic pieces that we used to use to stack on top of each other, like to build higher and higher. That's what we got right here. Looks like the same pieces in four colors. So pretty basic setup for building our Manhattan. But where's the board? It must be under... Ha! There we go. All right, so we got our old rule book there. Cool. Now let's open this board up. Let's see. What do we got? Oh. It actually looks nicer than I expected, but yes, so 90s. Look at those colors. I'm just waiting for squiggles to start dancing. Living single to play on the television. It's fantastic. All right, look at that. So we got our scoring on the left, and it looks like our downtown, midtown, all the different building sections. Pretty cool. Here is Struggle for the Galactic Empires. 2009, Joseph Miranda as the designer. Let's go open it up. All right, so let's check out Struggle for the Galactic Empire. I've got the little punch boards. I'm not going to look at those. But let's see what the map is like. So it's an actual paper map right here. Actually, looks like it's going to fold out to a pretty big size, so don't want to open the whole thing. Got our little score tracks there. And looks like we've got some printout facts. And I saw some dice in there and the original rule book right here. Let's take a look at that. And what's that say? J Military and Morphogenetic Combat Results Table. Oh my goodness, it's like an elements table. That's pretty cool. So the old black and white book here. Going way back in time with this. Awesome. Transhumans, Imperial Order. Absolutely lovely. Let's see if we can get it all back in there. Ever you got alien tokens. I don't know if you can see those down there on these little punch boards. There's a few different ones, but I don't want to hit them there. And it looks like just two dice. So not a ton of dice roll. There we go. And this one is added to my grail list for its solo mode. So check this out from 1998. So this is an expansion for El Grande, it looks like, but it's playable without it. So it must be standalone. It is two to four players. 
And we're actually going to open it up. So this is El Caballero. El Caballero. All right, let's see what's in here. Be real careful. So we got our original rule book there. Nice off-white color that they get. And some nice punch boards. I'm not going to flip through those. It looks like the punch boards are actually what make the board. Because there isn't actually a game board with this one. So in true classic Euro style, we've got our simple little scorecard. Very simple cards here. Numbered, colored. A few different... Actually, it looks like the same artwork on each one just different colors okay so maybe four suits something like that and then of course we got our four colors can't get more classic than that all right now this one i don't believe is on anybody's grail list but i'll tell you why it interests me so this is beowulf the movie board game you remember when the movie came out i think it was angelina jolie and some other dude in it. his fantasy flight games it even has a sticker on here that says uh, low value, not listed, I think, for eBay. So I don't even know if it's listed on there. But here's why it's interesting to me. I was an English major when I was going to college to be a teacher, which I became a teacher for several years. And part of that was literature and Anglo-Saxon literature. And I had an amazing professor. She could read and speak Anglo-Saxon. She, she's Worldwide, she's one of the most renowned. And she's actually quoted in one of the newer translations of Beowulf. Holding it sideways for you, as always. I'll let you look on the back while I, while I yammer on. But anyway, it's not my favorite story, but this movie came out shortly after I took the course. And it was fun when we were going through the book. We had language side by side. So we had the old Anglo-Saxon on one side and then the English on the English translation on the right side. And we got to learn kind of how to read the Anglo-Saxon just a little bit. It was fascinating. Anyway, movie has little to anything to do with the book, but it's just a nostalgic memory of that time that I enjoyed. So I'm interested in this just for that reason. And for funsies, let's open it up. All right. And we've got Beowulf here. Let's see what we can. We've got our original rule book there. The movie board game. I know it's a movie board game. It still excites me. Look at that board. See, those are beautiful colors. Too low value to be listed. Oh, my goodness. Check it out. And the other side, it is a pretty simple board. I'll give it that. Pretty basic. And those inserts that we all love that make no sense. But that's all right. It looks like player guides. I always appreciate those. And what else we got in here? We got miniatures. Well, we got tokens. Already punched out there. A lot of different tokens. And... Oh, uh, we do have miniatures. Cool. I'll see if I can line them up. There's lots more tokens. Yellow tokens. Maybe these are by player color. Who knows? You know I don't know these things. And lovely insert. And I won't bring them all out, but you can at least see some of these miniatures here. We got this cool ship right there. And, of course, you got, like, a castle. Looks like a castle to me. And your little Beowulf dudes or warriors of a sort. And there was a dragon somewhere in here. Maybe it was a different color. Yeah, I think it's... Oh, I guess not. I guess there is no dragon. I confused the ship for a dragon. And then the different player pieces seem to have all the same shapes. Let's see if I can actually get them all back just how I found it. Look at that. Work of art. Every legend has a king. Okay, now this one just looks super cool. This is two to eight players. This is called Battle Stations. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Are you a hero? Um, the artwork just caught my eye. A two to four hour play. Whoo! Ages 12 and up. I don't know about that. Let you take a look at the back here. Of course, with some of the older games, with these more grail type games, the art isn't always the most beautiful thing other than on the box. Oh my goodness. But just a quick little bit about it. We can't open this one up. But it says that amazing adventures await you. You can assault a starbase or have a showdown with an enemy ship or solve problems like unraveling the mystery of the ghost ship or escaping a nest of wormholes. Missions are designed to play in a single evening with no preparation, but your heroic adventures will last for lifetimes as continuing characters brave the dangers of darkest space. Yes, sir. Pretty cool. 
I think it's about time I take you on a tour of some of the other things here. Let's go. Honestly, won't be able to show them off. So I'm just going to pick some unique ones. Oh, my goodness. Conquest of Pangaea here. This is from 2006, I believe. And it just looks like it's a multiplayer game where you start with the continent of Pangaea and it sto slowly starts separating into the continents that we know now. And you're trying to gain world domination. But look at those. you got the little 3D pieces. So cool. And I know most of us have seen Alhambra from Queen Games. They've got a lot of these older gems here. But have you heard of the gardens of Alhambra? Or how about Metro? So this is Paris 1898, and I think it's in German. I'm not sure. There's no English on there, which I find absolutely fascinating. Also, Queen Games. There's a lot of these Queen Games hidden back here. All right, let's look at Metro. Here we go. Queen Games. Spiel 2000. We're going back in time here. Very nice. All right, some printed out editions. Oh, it's a translation. Okay. Okay, so this must be... Is it only in German? I'm not too sure. I do believe it is. Okay, the board, the most exciting part, of course. wonder if I can open it up. There we go. Definitely a classic... Euro board if I have ever seen one. Down to the primary colors and all. Look at that. So, got our little castles. Excellent. What else we got? We got our punch tables. And we got in classic Euro style, I love it, classic wooden pieces. Absolutely beautiful. Here's kind of an exciting one here. So this is Incursion. This is 2009, and it looks like, well, you know what? We can just open it up right now. It takes place over the World War II period. It looks like a fictional, like if the war ended differently, a survival game maybe. Let's just take a look at it. All right, and Incursion. Let's see what's inside here. Got our rule book. All right. Full color. And just going to be real careful with these. We got a bunch of punch boards there. You can see the artwork. More punch boards. So looks like there's some mechs involved. Now, I'll need the whole space for the board, so let's open that up last. We've got our figure standees. Okay, so those are all our cardboard figures. Then we've got our six dice in here. And then, of course, we won't open up any of the cards, but I can at least see the front and back of one here. There we go. So you see some nice terrain there. Looks like we're going around in the cellars during World War II times. Pretty cool. Incursion. Another Queen Games gem here. This is called Inca, and it looks like it's a small maze game where you're at the entrance of a temple trying to find your way to the treasures inside, making your way through the maze. 
Now, I can't lie, I know nothing about, it's either a film or a book called The Swarm. I know absolutely nothing about it, but this stood out to me. This is 2004 Zemon Games, and it looks almost like a, it's a, it's a novel. There we go. You know what, I'm just going to read this here, because we're not going to be able to open this one up, but I'll see if I can find some pictures. We've got, around the world, researchers are confounded by a mystery. Strange organisms appear in coastal waters, and whales start to behave oddly. Is it all by chance, or are they signs of an impending catastrophe? The task of the players is to discover the cause. They set up research stations and send out ships in order to fathom out this secret from the ocean's depths. By linking up your research stations and making contact with the Oceanic Swarm Queen, the source of the mystery will be revealed. So I am super interested in this. I don't think it has a one-player mode. Um, a lot of these older ones didn't, unless you go back to like the war games. You know I'll never find it. I'm terrible at that. Yeah, there we go. Two to four players. This right here. This is definitely one of my Grail games that I'm interested in, even though it doesn't have a one-player mode. So this is Space Hulk. And let's not even say anything. Let's just open it up. Okay, and what I came here for, and here's what's pretty cool. I'm going to show you in a minute. There's an expansion that includes solo play. So how cool is that? From what I understand, it plays almost like um, Aliens Another Day in the Core. I could be wrong about that, but similar idea. Going around the Space Hulk ship, fighting alien thingies as you create a map from all these little puzzle pieces. Love this. I don't know if this was made in the 80s or 90s or 2000, but it gives me that um, childhood 90s kind of vibe. All right, so lots and lots of puzzle pieces to pull out, or like a Star Wars Imperial Assault that came later. You know, you're building out your map. Connecting all the pieces. Lots of map pieces. So I wonder if you have to buy the miniatures different, or are there... There's a little standee thing, so there must be cardboard standees somewhere in there. All right, so we got our rules. Cool. Missions in the background. Let's see what those look like. Ooh, look at that artwork. Scary. And the fall of Daruni Wee. Okay, cool. Love it. Okay, so I don't see the standees, so I'm going to have to look up how the game works because this is another one that I'm putting on my list as well as a few of the others and that I want to try to pick up. This is the one that you can see it says it includes roles for full solo play. So Deathwing expansion for Space Hulk, I assume, and it looks like it's um, a little more color on the maps. Well, these are different. These are cards as opposed to the puzzle pieces. There are still the puzzle piece maps in here. You can see, whoops, you can see some with some cables and boxes and scary TV screens, or maybe they're people in tubes. Who knows? And then, of course, some crates. If you know much about Space Hulk, please let me know. I am pretty sure it's a miniatures game, but again, I am guessing as I have to do my research now. And a bonus one here, Space Opera, just because what a cool name. And it is not in English, so I can't tell you a thing about it. But similar to the other, that other older space game we looked at, it looks like these were commonly just um, like poster paper mats. And this is a huge mat. This is half the size, so I'm not going to open it the whole way, but you can kind of see you've got some kind of charting out there, and I'd have to find it all in English. We've got a nice note there in, is it Spanish? Un guioto de explorer. I don't know. Is it Portuguese or English? I think it's Spanish. Oh, there's other pieces, though. Okay, so the original rule book there. Pretty cool. And... Yep, all in Spanish or something. Except for the space opera part, of course. The title is in English there. And these, there's nothing to see here, but it looks like they fold into long boxes to hold something. Couldn't tell you what. We've got our six dice. Nice. And some stickers. Okay. Put some stickers on. This turns into a box as well. And then... 
we won't go through all that. Well, we've just got the sheets, which I want to show you. Arrakis, what is this, like a dune thing? Hoth, that's like a Star Wars thing, Vulcan, Star Trek. Oh, okay, so it's kind of combining, like, everything. Very interesting. Energies. This would be pretty... Uh, Marines. This would be pretty cool if you could get the rules in English there. I am very interested in this one. It looks like that says Italian, so maybe that's what it is. It's Italian. That makes sense, Opera. I'll take it. And somehow you've made it to the end with me. There's so much more to see. Look, this is just an introduction, and I'm so glad I got introduced to all of these cool, I would call them, Grail games. But here's one that I really want. You know I love social deduction games. I've got face tracking on, so I'm trying to confuse the camera. Eh, stay with me. Cool. But this is like the mother slash father grandparents of a lot of the social deduction games that we play, Battlestar Galactica. And with that, I leave you. I love you all. If you want to see more, if you want to dig deeper, please let me know and we're going to do it. I love you all. I'll see you next time.